Hello everybody and welcome back to Cubone, my name is Quinton. Today is another Helldivers Weekly Recap, but this video will be going up on June 26th, 2024. There's been a lot of back and forth this week, and I think it's going to be quite interesting. This new video format is definitely a lot easier on me, and the videos are still doing okay, so we'll keep doing it like this for a while and see what happens. But, without any further ado, let's get on to the news. Last week, we had a new major order to reduce the terminate population and clear planets for citizen settlement. This included the planets Hellmire, Nibble 43, Estanu, Crimsica, and Fori Prime. And as of Wednesday morning, a new defense had begun, this time on the stated Fori Prime. This is interesting because the MO didn't say we had to hold the planets of the MO, it had already been liberated. So, would we have to liberate the planet should we lose the defense? In an attempt to prevent this, divers redoubled their efforts, taking Hellmire by 3 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, thanks in part to the addition of the Flam 40 Flamethrower to all loadouts for 48 hours. By this time, we were losing the defense, but rapidly catching up with 14 hours to go. Meanwhile, Nivel 43 began its own liberation, with 40,000 divers by 6 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, estimated at 32 hours until liberation. We still had over 64 hours on the major order, nearly double what was needed. Progress had slowed a bit by the night, with 40 Prime once again falling below liberation liberation rate needed, and Nibble 43's liberation extending several hours. Despite the fury with which Helldivers fought, Fori Prime was lost, and as expected, this meant we were short another planet for the MO. But with it just below 50% and Nibble 43 approaching the same, it wasn't over yet. Throughout Thursday, divers split between the two planets, even as two new defenses began through the day, on Mort and later on Gekrux on the southern side of the Terminate Front. Players were very interested in the new forest planet of Gekrux, though that wasn't likely enough to save it. By Friday morning, divers were fighting where they could, still fairly spread out. Nibble 43 had passed 90%, and Fori Prime was nearly at 75, so both were in reach with 27 hours on the MO. This came at the expense of the defense planets. While the new biome had spurred divers to take nearly 85% of Gekrux, we were still losing, with Mort feeling even more abandoned at less than 8% as it ended. We would have to avenge them by completing the MO in time. Through the morning, Nivel 43 was quickly completed by 11 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, and over 50,000 divers moved to Fori Prime. Before it was clear, though, two new defenses began on Pandion 24 and new planet Ursin Sands. Despite this, we still easily completed the MO. Success! The Helldivers has successfully achieved a significant reduction in Terminid population levels, proving the efficacy of targeting Terminid nurseries directly. Many once-infested planets are now ready for our citizens to settle. This is the first step towards Terminid containment and the long-lasting prosperity it will bring our citizens. Immediately after, we were set to a new task. Briefing, the automatons have been making incursions into the Czar sector, invading the same territory we liberated from their initial vanguard. If successful, they could reactivate their defunct factories and defile the memorial of Malevolon Creek. Whatever their aims, they must be stopped. So the bots are trying to make a mockery of our accomplishments? Like hell. We must hold these planets and prevent a tragedy like the fall of the creek from ever happening again. This wouldn't be easy as yet another defense began on Vandalon 4, trying to box us into the Zarsec. This was alongside a fourth defense on Ingmar, one of the MO's planets. Divers obviously focused there alongside Mort, the only planet initially under bot control as the MO started, sitting under 50%. The first to complete was Ingmar as we liberated it Saturday morning at roughly 4.40 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. The good news didn't last though as by Saturday afternoon, Ursin Sands and Pandion 24 were both lost on the bug front. At Around 5 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, Vandalon 4 also fell, leading to a new defense on Poply 9, one of the MO planets. With less than 12,000 divers planet side, it looked as though we might not make it, though the 24,000 on Mort had the planet above 85%, leaving them free to join the defense in roughly 4 hours. There were, however, 17,500 on Bug Planet Gekrux and almost 6,500 on Pandion 24, ignoring the MO despite those planets continuing to decay. You were given direct orders, and your democracy officers will be informed. As reinforcements fell for the night, Mort wasn't complete until roughly 2 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time Sunday. Surprisingly, the defense on Poply 9, despite reinforcements, only briefly rising above 12,000. The bots made one last push between Saturday and Sunday on Ingmar around 4 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, and despite being a slow point for the game, players quickly got to it. This lasted until roughly 10.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time as two more defenses began on Mantis and Fact Bay. With Mantis 
Atlantis being a major order planet, over 33,000 divers rushed to its aid at the day's peak, gradually dropping until the planet was completed around 1.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Meanwhile, on Ingmar, things rose through the day, up to almost 45,000 divers by 2.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. This meant that by Monday morning, all planets for the major order were held. Fact Bay, unfortunately, was left on its own at first, quickly falling to the bugs as divers focused on the major order. By Monday morning, yet again, the bots began attacking Ingmar at 3.43 a.m. alongside Troost and Virilia 5. Over 32,000 divers jumped to Ingmar this time, clearing the bot infestation before 12.30 Mountain Daylight Time. The other two planets weren't as lucky, ending Monday with roughly 10% each. The majority of divers instead tried to push Gacrux and Vandalon 4, though neither assault had quite the impact hoped for. As Monday drew to a close, we once again held all the planets for the major order with just over a day left. Early Tuesday morning, the bots made several cowardly attacks, including on Major Order Planet Mort. This would likely be their last chance before the Major Order ended, but with over 20,000 divers ready to keep the sector secure, the planet was successfully defended by 9 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. This unfortunately left the remaining defenses on Virilia 5, Troost, and Nivel 43 without enough reinforcements, the first falling at the start of Tuesday, and the second falling through the day. Despite doing my part on Gacrux during my weekly Helldivers 2 stream, the planet still sat at 40% and dropping. Instead, 31% of divers took to Vandalon 4, expecting to take it back by the end of Wednesday. Finally, the defense on Nibble 43 continued to flounder, 10% below the liberation rate needed to take it. By the time this video goes up, the major order will have been successfully completed, and a new one will likely have started and I can't wait. And that's all I have for my weekly Helldivers 2 recap. I hope you all enjoyed. A few last minute things. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be getting out my video on the patch notes or the Viper Commandos Warbond. I mentioned last week that that would hopefully be out soon, but as you can tell, it's still not out and it's not going to be out. I have it half edited and that's where it's gonna stay. Unless there's some kind of push for it. If you guys really want to see it for some reason, I'll finish it up. But unfortunately, with my other projects and with work, I just simply don't have the time to finish it. And I don't really have the motivation because the last one didn't do very well. But that said, I hope to see you guys next week. Remember to be gay and do crimes, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.